So hello. Today I'd like to discuss multi-stage amplifiers. So this is a stage of amplification. This is another stage of amplification. <clears throat> so with amplifiers, getting one stage to give you the proper gain, signal gain from a small signal to a large signal and with all the fidelity and uh, make it a true uh, amplified signal and also match input impedances and output impedances. It's a little difficult to do that with one stage. And so what we tend to do is we tend to find a couple of stages, one to give us, let's say, high input impedance and good amplification, and the other one to give us, say, low output impedance, say you're driving a speaker or some other load, load anything that uh, requires current is a load. So we tend to have uh, multiple stages in order to achieve that. So in this case here, I'm calling this Q1 transistor 1 and this Q2 transistor 2. They are in the common emitter configuration where the signal is taken off the collector. And so we'll come in here on the base of Q1, we'll come out on the collector of Q1 into the base of Q2 and out of the collector on Q2. This coupling that you see right here is known as direct coupled. There is another coupling where we can put a capacitor in between, which we'll show later, and a few bias resistors. The advantage of direct coupling, nothing is free, so you have an advantage and a disadvantage. The advantage is without capacitor and resistor networks, we have less filtering of the signal from a frequency perspective. The disadvantage is we have less control over any variations with temperature and such in the second stage and the first stage. So by using stiff bias as we have here, we have an advantage. But then again, the disadvantage is the frequency roll-offs. Regardless, let's just pursue this direct coupled amplifier. So the first thing we do is what is the voltage at the base? And if we recall from our voltage divider video, it's going to be 22K divided by 22K plus 100K times the voltage over here. So if you do that particular math, simple calculator, you should come up with 2.16 volts, okay? And that's the voltage at this base. Now, as you know, there is a 0 .0.7 volt drop across this base to emitter junction. And so if the base voltage is 2.16, then the emitter voltage for E1 is going to be 2.16 less uh, 0.7, and that's basically one point, and check my math on this, but 1.46 volts. Okay, now that we know the voltage at this point, and we know the resistor here, 4.7K in the emitter, then what is the current, what is the current through this uh, circuit here, down through this resistor? Now we're only doing DC, so this capacitor blocks DC. When we later talk about AC signals, this capacitor will become a short. But right now we're doing DC. So what is the emitter current? Or what is the collector current? Because if we say that the emitter current is approximately equal to the collector current, which it is because the base current is so small, then what is the emitter current in this case which is going to equal the collector current? So what we need to do is we need to divide this 1.46 volts here by this 4.7K ohms here, and we'll come up with 310 micro amperes. And please, uh, please ensure um, that you, uh, we, we could take it a little further than that. It was 310.64 uh, the last time I looked at that. So let's just, let's just correct that a bit. Uh, round off errors may <coughs> cause some future problems. Okay, so the collector current, 310 0.64 microamps, which is the current coming through here and then goes through the transistor and then goes down through the emitter resistor. Okay, now that's great. The next thing to know is we know the voltage here, we know the voltage here. What is the voltage at this point? Well, we have 12 volts at the top here and we're going to drop through this resistor with that uh, IC current. So 310.64 microamps times 22K ohm resistor will, receive, will result in uh, a current uh, voltage here, subtract it from 12, and what you should have is um, 5.18 volts on the collector. Okay, so if you have 5.81 volts 
on the collector, and it is a direct coupled amplifier, then the voltage on the base of transistor number two is going to be 5.18 volts. Easy breezy. Now, <clears throat> we go through the same process. We need to subtract 0.7 volts there. So let's see if my math is still good. I think it's 4.48 uh, volts. That makes sense to you. And then if we have 4.48 volts here and we have a 10K resistor, so then 10K into that should be 448 microamps again. And if that is the case, 448 microamps through this resistor, so 12 volts minus ICRC2 will give me uh, 12 minus 4.48, which will be uh, seven point, approximately 7.53 volts. Okay, so we've set up, from a DC perspective, we've set up our two stages. Now, we're going to get into the AC part in a second, but before we do that, let's just finalize the calculation for the emitter resistor. As you may recall, the transistor model, simplified resistor model, looks like this, where we have this small resistance in the emitter. We have this base current times the beta uh, driving down here. And so we will have a voltage on our base, AC wise, small, small letters for AC. So we need to understand this emitter resistor. The formula we have, and it's temperature dependent, that's where we get the 25 millivolts from, is uh, 25 millivolts over the DC current, which happens to be equal to, in this case here, the collector current. So that would be 25 over 310.64 um, microamps. And so doing the math is, uh, let's see if I can do that in my head, 80.5 ohms. And we should do the same thing on this side here. So if we do 25 millivolts over the emitter current here, this will be equal to, uh, I'm trying to think here, 50.9 ohms. Okay. So we're going to come back. Now that we've set up our DC, that's fine. We're going to set up our AC values because what are we trying to figure out with AC? Basically, if these are amplifiers, then what is the so-called amplification factor? What is the gain of these amplifiers? And in order to figure that out, we're going to look at what goes in and what comes out. So this will be going in and essentially out of that load resistor, RC, that will be going out. And so we'll measure the voltage out, or at least calculate it, the voltage out over the voltage in, and we'll see that uh, we have a formula for that, and I'll show that for you in, in, a, in a minute, that uh, that will give us the gain for this amplifier stage, the same thing for that stage. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take that number, a dimensionless number, it's just a multiplier, and we're going to turn it into a decibel. And a decibel is a tenth of a bell, and it's 20 log to the base 10 of that number will be equal to how many decibels of gain we have. So let me clean this board and we'll get back to it in a second.